Welcome to the video on apoptosis. In one of the first videos we discussed the differences between necrosis versus apoptosis. You can go ahead and review that video if you'd like. Um, but in this video we're going to talk about in more depth the process of apop apoptosis. Um, what causes apoptosis? There are several causes. Um, but first of all, one thing to remember is that um, apoptosis does not cause inflammation. So there is no inflammation in apoptosis. That's only in necrosis. And apoptosis is more of a programmed uh, cell death. When cells have outlived their usefulness, then the, you know, then the cells will undergo apoptosis and die. What causes apoptosis? There's more uh, physiological side, physiological and pathological. Some reasons why f uh, under physiological apoptosis is, let's say, during uh, when all of us started out as a zygote inside our mother's <clears throat> our mother's womb. When we were being created, our um, our cells started to multiply like this, and one cell became two, and two became four, and four became eight, and we became ourselves multiple um, multiple cell millions and billions of cells. Um, so in that process, many cells, you know, you have the original stem cells that can turn into different kinds of cell types. Well, some of these cells might be ne might needed to be deleted, if you will, to make room for other cell type, other cell types, and that's an example of physiological apoptosis. Another example could be during the menstrual cycle of a female. You know, she's going throughout the month, and then you know, hormones happen, which cause different cells in her uterus and her uh, and her linings to slough off, and that that is an example of um, apoptosis when that happens. Some reasons of pathological apoptosis could be, um, let's say, for example, you have a cell here. You have a nucleus, and inside the nucleus you have your DNA, and you go out in the sun, and you um, get some sun rays, which make your turn, make your skin turn tan, but also it might, you know, cleave some of this DNA right here, might cut some of these DNA in half, and cause DNA problems, and then your cell will undergo apoptosis if it can't fix itself. Um, let's say, for example you have another cell here and it's producing these uh, proteins that are not normal. As I say, it's coming off like this and it wasn't supposed to do that. Well, if the cell can't fix that or if it's making too many wrong proteins, it will undergo apoptosis. Apop apoptosis. It will undergo apoptosis. So these are some of the causes of, of pathological and physiological apoptosis. And remember that apoptosis does not cause inflammation. Another big example of apoptosis that I forgot to mention was, um, or of physiological, is let's say you have a leukocyte here, a white blood cell, and you have a bacteria here, and this leukocyte just you know, engulfed this bacteria and is destroying it, you know, with his lysosomes and all the different ways that cells have to destroy bacteria. So it's being destroyed here. Well, if it if it's if it's passed, if it if there's some mechanism that's triggered inside the cell saying, hey, you know, this this guy was a little bit bigger than what you could chew off or you know, you'd actually didn't kill the bacteria, it's actually infected, it got you got infected and it, and it's in your DNA now, then this cell will undergo apoptosis and kill itself so that it doesn't spread. 
that this bacteria doesn't spread. So that's another important um, example of uh, physiological apoptosis. So there is two main pathways by which apoptosis occurs. In order to talk about this, I'm going to use a picture here um, taken from Robin's Basic Pathology 8th edi edition, and Kumar is the author here. Um, there is the intrinsic pathway right here, and then there's the extrinsic. So we're, first we're going to talk about the intrinsic, or within. So when there's the cell injury, like growth factor withdraw, um, so growth factor is constantly being applied to a cell. If for some reason that's withdrawn, um, then the cell will initiate this intrinsic mitochondria apoptosis pathway. If the DNA is damaged, kind of like what we talked about, if there's protein misfolding, kind of what we talked about, there is a class of molecules um, called the BCL2 family. Okay, now these now these class of molecules, these BCL2, they're sensors. So if if something happens and these sensors are triggered, then they're gonna then they're gonna affect the effectors backs and back. And what they'll do is they'll burrow these little holes. You see these little holes in this mitochondria? They'll burrow these holes inside the mitochondria and cytochrome C and pro-apoptotic proteins are going to leak out. And then they're going to initiate these cas caspases. I think I believe that's how you pronounce that, but caspases. And these caspases then they're going to they're going to effect downstream. Don't worry about this part of the picture, we'll talk about that later. But these regulators right here, there's certain regulators, these ones right here, the BCL2 and the BCLX, these inhibit, these inhibits backs and back, these, uh, these effectors here. So they're constantly inhibiting these factors and they've seen, they've uh, seen also that when the growth factor is diminished. Um, there also will be less of these regulators, and when you have a decrease in regulation, well, we kind of all know what happens. Then that makes makes room for more chaos. So if you take out these regulators, these guys that are kind of controlling these effectors, then there's going to be more of these little holes burrowed inside these mitochondria, and more cytochrome C and pro A apoptotic proteins are going to be leaking out, um, causing these cas caspases to um, become active, which will further promote the, the pathway of um, apoptosis. So this extrinsic pathway, every cell kind of has a, a, a death receptor, if you will, and um, these receptors are the uh, tumor tumor necrosis fat tumor necros necrosis factor receptor and the fast factor. The fast receptor is usually on T lymphocytes, which is uh, just a part of the immune system. But these receptors on the this um, extrinsic pathway. When they're bound, then they initiate inside the cell when there's some kind of uh, ligand right here that binds to this receptor, this these adapter proteins are activated and then in turn they activate this cas caspases. Now there's a molecule called FLIP and this FLIP molecule kind of acts like these regulators over here on this pathway that it will kind of, if there's a lot of flip, it will kind of stop this extrinsic pathway. And some viruses have their own version 
and some viruses have their own version of this flip molecule and it inhibits this pathway so that then you don't start seeing um, this um, activity that will further break down the cell. So that's kind of scary that some of these viruses can, you know, they the virus gets injected into your cell and then it takes over its machinery, over the machinery, and it inhibits, uh, even though the body's saying, hey, you're infected, kill yourself, kill yourself type of a thing, um, undergo apoptosis, this f these viruses have mutated and have evolved to kind of have this flip protein or this flip uh, molecule that will inhibit this extrinsic pathway, which is kind of scary. Um, but anyways, if you didn't have this flip molecule, you'd keep going down this, this uh, pathway and this executioner caspases, they'll activate this endo endonucleases. And endonucleases just go in here and they just start cleaving the heck out of all your DNA. So you don't have, so the DNA just becomes fragmented. Also, the caspases will activate enzymes that will break down your cytoskeleton, that will break down the cell. And then it, and then you can kind of see here that these, there's little buddings off, budding offs, if you will. Um, and these are called cytoplasmic blebs. And they'll kind of pinch off right here, and then they'll kind of create this apoptotic body which is then phagocytized by the phagocytes. There's a, a name. See these little uh, ligands right here? Or these little receptors, if you will. These are called phosphatidylserine. And on the inside, remember how I was saying that um, the membranes are, are a bilayer, a lipid bilayer? Well, these receptors are on the inside, usually. They're kind of sticking off like this. They're on the inside of, of, the, uh, of the membrane over on here. They're on the inside. And then when, it, when the cytoplasmic bleb kind of buds off, something triggers these to kind of flip on the outside. And once they flip on the outside, this apoptotic body also kind of secretes these chemical factors, if you will, that these phagocytes, they're kind of like dogs. They kind of can sniff out, sniff out some things. And so they'll kind of, they'll kind of sniff out these uh, little chemical signals. And that's kind of another way that these phagocytes are attracted to these apoptotic bodies and can recognize that they need to be consumed to not... Uh, you know, they need to be digested and recycled. And that's phosphatidylserine. Now, something that I wanted to talk about um, real quick is P53. So P53. P53 is a, is a molecule and it's it's responsible for um, let's say this is a big cell and inside the cell there is a nucleus and inside the nucleus there is a double helix DNA strand with all of our genetic code and everything and p53 is this little enzyme is this little molecule here that will it's kind of responsible for making sure that the DNA is is intact and working fine. And when the DNA is hurt by some, some um, is cleaved, is split in half by in some way, P53 will start to accumulate. P53 will start in, to accumulate and then P53 will start, uh, will, will trigger will trigger apoptosis. And P50 and P53 is a is a molecule that will kind of um, will kind of scan the DNA to make sure that it, that it's okay. And they have found that in some cancers in cancer uh, P53 
is inactive is deactivated. Deactive. So in some cancers, this p53 molecule is deactivated. So the the p53 doesn't trigger the the cell to undergo apoptosis when it is damaged. So that this cell then um, replicates or you know is copied copied if you will and then the cancer begins to grow and grow and grow and grow and grow and grow and grow and, grow. and the whole while this p53 if it was functioning could have stopped this cancer and there's some research that is going on that w that is trying to figure out ways to um, promote p53 or fix p53 and and there's a molecule called anthocyanin anthocyanin and it's found in purple veggies uh, and, and purple tomatoes specifically tomato in purple tomatoes and you can google this just google purple tomato or anthrocyanin p53 cancer and it will come up and you can find some stuff in PubMed that kind of talks about that but there's some active research and they're saying that purple vegetables or or vegetables that have um, purple color or purple tomatoes have found they've done these studies with mice where they've uh, exposed them to a diet high in this in this stuff and they have p53 mutations and they actually live longer so I don't know the research is still out on that but it's kind of interesting another another plug for eating a good diet and that's it for apoptosis see you in the next video